Okay, so, <clears throat> on my little adventure with doing art things and whatever, I decided to look into something called an NFT. And I had heard of them over the years, but I really didn't know much about them, because it's just like, eh, eh, where's my shit? Hold on, I need to go hunt for shit real quick. In two seconds. Now, for anyone who's like me, who's a curious little bunch, right? Um, I didn't know exactly what an NFT is. I just heard of them. But I knew that you could sell your art pieces as NFTs online. And they could get you buku's amount of money if people like them and shit. Which is the whole problem with AI art. But that, I'll t discuss that another day. But it does affect even me as a traditional artist medium, even though I'm not a digital artist. However, we will continue on with this venture, right? So I was curious, what is an NFT? So I decided to go look that up. And I ended up on this, which was, are NFTs bad for the environment, carbon, energy, and more? Like a blockchain, NFTs have a negative reputation when it comes to the environment. Learn why and whether that negative impact has changed the, in the last few years. And this was September 2023, and I was sitting there like, what the fuck's a blockchain? Why the fuck would something that's on the internet be bad for the environment. You know what I mean? It was one of those things where it was like really a concern and shit. So I decided, what's a blockchain? And I decided to look it up. Did this pull up just fine? Yes, it did. All right, cool. I can never know what this thing. Uh, so I started looking up what is a blockchain. Up here it says a blockchain is a distributed ledger with growing lists of records that are securely linked together via cryptographic hashes. Which is like, what the f like a hashtag? But no, I don't think that's the same. Um, each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp, and transaction data. Since each block contains information about the previous block, they effectively form a chain with each additional block linking to the ones before it. Let's look at Investopia. Let's look at this real quick. Why would you highlight that? So what is a blockchain? It's a digital database or ledger that distributes, that is distributed amongst the nodes. Yeah, I don't want to see that, thanks. Um, distributed among the nodes of the peer-to-peer -peer network, which is like, what the fuck, what's a node? You know? Um, peer references. Like, let me, hold on, I need to know what a node is exactly. File, file transfer protocol, and what is it used for? Get off my screen, thank you. Uh, the term file transfer protocol, FTP, ref refers to the process that involves the transfer of files between devices over a network. The process works when one party allows another to send or receive files over the internet. Originally used as a way to for users to communicate and exchange information to between two physical devices, it is now commonly used to store files in the cloud which is usually a secure location that is held and accessed remotely. We all know what cloud storage is, right? How much data does that use? That's a real question. I don't want to be educated as an investor. I don't have nothing to invest except blood, and I ain't giving that shit up. Uh, now, these blockchains are best known for their crucial role in cryptocurrency systems for maintaining a secure and decentralized record of transactions, but they are not limited to cryptocurrency uses. Blockchains can be used to make data and any industry immutable, the term used to describe an inability to be altered. You understand that? It's immutable, which means it won't change. So it's the opposite of a Sagittarius, a Virgo, a Pisces. And a Gemini. Sorry, I'm sorry, Gemini. I didn't mean to fuck you. I was sitting there like, who isn't popping in my head right now? Why are you hiding from me, motherfucker? Gemini, why are you hiding from somebody? Why do I feel like you're hiding from somebody? You know, I'm just saying, just because I ain't picking up the cards don't mean I don't feel s still uh, I know what the fuck's going on. Let me, let, let's not get this twisted. I don't fucking need the cards to know what's going on. Uh, I just do it so y'all can see what I see what the fuck's going on. There's a big ass difference. Hmm. But there's a Gemini hiding from somebody. I don't know why they're hiding, though. 
like they stole something or some shit. Or worse, um, they're hiding from someone who might have stole from them. <laughs> Which is absolutely the most ironic. Why would you hide from someone who stole from you? Shouldn't it be the other way? But that's beside the point. Blockchains can be used to make data in any industry mutable. Oh, right. Because there's no way to change the block. The only trust needed at this point is when the user or programmer enters data. This aspect reduces the need for trusted third parties, which are usually auditors or other humans that add costs and make mistakes. Since Bitcoin's introduction in 2009, blockchains have used and ex have exploded via the creation of various cryptocurrencies, decentralized finance, DeFi applications, non-fungible tokens, which are NFTs, and smart contracts. How's it work? <laughs> Might be familiar with spreadsheets or databases. A blockchain is somewhat similar because it is a database where information is entered and stored. But the key difference is between a traditional database or a spreadsheet and a blockchain is how the data is structured and accessed. A blockchain consists of programs called scripts. Not like the ones you get from the doctor where, where you can shake that shit and, like, you know, how do you get a girl in West Virginia's attention? That. Not, not those kind of scripts, right? But actual scripts in, like, HTML and shit like that. And this, these scripts that conduct the task would usually take you in a database, entering and accessing information and saving and storing it somewhere. The blockchain is distributed, which means multiple copies are saved on many machines, and they must all match for validity, all at the same time, kind of like a time clock, except it's relying on all the users to have access to that clock. Uh, you just can't, you can't see the time whenever you want to. You gotta be part of the blockchain in order to see what time it is. You understand? Probably not. It's, it's, uh, it's difficult without actually, like, seeing it, seeing it. Blockchain collects transac transaction information and enters it into a block. Like a cell in a spreadsheet containing information. Once it's full, the information is run through an encryption algorithm which creates a hexadecimal number called a hash. The hash is then entered into the following block header and encrypted with other information in the block. This creates a series of blocks that are chained together. Ask Daisy about this. She knows exactly what this is. She programs this shit. She knows exactly what the fuck this shit is. Why did you just pop into my head, bitch? She knows how this works. Transactions follow a specific process. Depending on the blockchain they are taking place on, for example, on a Bitcoin blockchain, if you initiate a transaction using your cryptocurrency wallet, the application that provides an interface for the blockchain, it starts a sequence of events. In Bitcoin, your transaction, it sends to a memory pool where it is stored and queued in a seal uh, until a miner or validator picks it up. Once it is entered into a block and the block fills up with the transactions, it is closed and encrypted using an encryption algorithm. Then the mining begins. What? Okay, this is the transaction being entered. The transaction... Hold on. There we go. This is the transaction. The transaction is then transmitted to a network of peer-to-peer -peer computers scattered across the world. So it's all on these computers. Whoever has this trend whoever's in this blockchain any of these people with a computer that's connected to that blockchain can access it this network of computers then solves equations to confirm the validity of transactions and then the transaction is complete these blocks are then chained together creating a long history of all transactions that are permanent once confirmed to be legitimate transactions they are clustered together into blocks wait why why would you go like that why would you want to circle why are we going clockwise because i read it counter i read it this way and this i read it like a fucking american ass the audacity okay well all right so the new transaction is entered transaction is then transmitted to the networks the computer networks then solve the equations to confirm the validity then it goes to being confirmed to be legitimate transactions clustered in a block the blocks are then chained together create a long history of all the transactions that are permanent and the transaction is complete why would you do it like that if you're going to make it in how are you going to make a square ass circle why didn't you just make it a whole circle 
So I didn't look like a fuck... Like, well, I guess that's my fault, but still, I didn't want to look like that kind of asshole. The, the entire network works simultaneously to try to solve the hash. Each one generates a random hash except for the nonce. Sure, for a number used once. That is not what I know nonce to be, but okay. Every miner starts with a nonce of zero, which is app appended to their randomly generated hash. If that number isn't equal or less to than the target hash, a value of one is added to the nonce, and a new block hash is generated. This continues until a miner generates a valid hash, winning the race and receiving the reward. Oh, that's a law. Oh, I didn't realize it was like that. Every miner starts with a nonce of zero, which is appended to their randomly generated hash. If that number isn't equal to or less than the target hash, a value of one is, is added to the nonce and a new log hash is generated. This continues until a miner generates a valid hash, winning the race and receiving the rewards. So someone's actually got to get the right number. This is something where you type it in. You literally have to... Which is why, like, proof of stake is more important than proof of work. You actually have to pay to do that. Wow! How much does every... Nuns call? How much does every nonce and every block cost people? Once a block is closed, a transaction is complete. However, the block is not considered to be confirmed until five other blocks have been validated. Confirming it takes the network about an hour to complete it because it averages just under 10 minutes per block. The first block with your transaction and five following multiplied by 10 equals about 60 minutes. Not all blocks follow this process. The Ethereum network randomly chooses one validator from all users with either staked to validate blocks, which are then confirmed by the network. This is much faster and less energy intensive than Bitcoin process. Okay, that's a lot. Is a lot. So why is this bad for the environment? I just literally sat there and looked at it and it clicked in my head like, oh. That's fucked. So, the volume of digital assets have exploded over the past decade as non-fungible tokens move from their 2014 creation to a near mainstream commodities as they are today. I read this before, that's why I'm saying it through it. That growing volume of transaction in turn has driven increasing levels of energy consumption and carbon emissions, prompting questions about the impact that NFTs have on the real wide environment. Now you might be wondering, the fuck? We just read the bar about the block and we realized, hey, People keep going through this whole, uh, we need a nonce that's higher. We need a nonce that's close to the number. We need a nonce that's not less than the value or whatever. Uh, over and over and over again. The Environmental Advocacy Group, 8 billion trees, for example, has estimated it would take 5 trees to offset the carbon emission into the environment on average by each NFT throughout its life cycle, including its secondary sales. 5 trees! Think about a five fucking trees. I know most people, they aren't used to trees being heavy. But if you've ever picked up something that's made of solid wood, thank you, phone, um, is a lot. Is a lot, sis. Is a lot. Is a lot. Charge your ass, please. Thank you. An NFT lives in a computer f so long as it's on uh, the blockchain. As long as it's online. It consumes electricity. Uh, Mark Lejour, member of the and the I Canada blockchain region lead. The fact that, coupled with more companies and individuals tracking the energy consumption and carbon footprint of their activities has put the spotlight on the environmental impact on NFTs. We already know what NFTs are. Mm. And and the reason why I looked at the NFTs is because of uh, art. Because like I was interested in that. I was just like, maybe I could try to sell my art through blockchains. Because like, at least I know AI wouldn't be able to get into them entirely. And I and I would actually have proof that it's mine because you could tell with the brush strip. Like it's a lot easier to tell that like artwork is authentic with actual paint than it is digital art because digital art all looks the same to me. It's just like how their styles is what differentiates them. But I can tell who painted what with paints based on how the person strokes their brush. That's how you can tell the difference between a Picasso and a Monet or a Monet and a Van Gogh. Yes, their styles play big importance. But you could also just not know 
an art piece of theirs if you're not really well rounded and look at it but you'd be able to figure it out by the way they paint it by the way they did their brush strokes by the by the pressure they put on the brush to either press it hard and lift up or just do a gentle line and like all over that like to me traditional art tells so much more about the artist than digital art does but that's just me anyway NFTs, carbon emissions, and their impact on the environment. That explosive growth in NFT market coincided with the increasing attention on environmental issues more generally. Fears from the professional services from the... Uh, speak it to this point. According to this tally, more than 70 countries that contributed to three quarters of global emissions have set net zero carbon emission targets, and 20% of the largest 2,000 public tr companies have committed to net zero targets. Have also addressed how this relates to NFTs, writing that blockchain technology has scaled rapidly in the last several years and is projected to expand to an even larger market across industries and countries. Potentially regulatory action by governments concerned with the energy impact of blockchain activity is another reason to focus on NFT sustainability. NFTs, despite their digital nature, do indeed have an environmental impact and a carbon footprint, said Alexander Nimia. Because you gotta pause after this day. You can't be, no, no, and then say, sorry, it's gotta be, no, no. Uh, a research associate at the Cambridge Center for Ultimate Finance at the University of Cambridge Judge Business School in England. In fact, the impact mimics what happens in the real world. Just as creating, selling, and transporting a physical item exudes resources, so too do tokens create and transacted on the blockchain. Nimia said. With NFTs, you have nodes running and processing transactions. You're consuming electricity. And for anyone who doesn't understand, I'm pretty sure if I'm understanding this correctly, the node is literally who has the computer that's using that. Like, a person who I would think is a miner would be a node point in the uh, blockchain. Your computer would act like a node. I assume um, as long as you... A part of that blockchain, you're consuming electricity on the regular, which kind of makes me sit here and think about it a little more. It's just like, I'm broke enough as it is, so if I get on a blockchain, is this going to make my electricity bill run up? You know? Like, if I turn all of my equipment off, like my computer and my laptop and my other shit, if I turn all of that off, will my shit still be consuming electricity? That's the question um, I'm, a I, I'm, I'm putting out here. And I think the answer is yes. And I think that's what a node actually is. I think even if I were to turn off my computers and shit and got into a blockchain or some shit like that, it would still be consuming electricity even if I shut all my shit off. And I think that's the weirdest. That is weird when you really think about it. But I could be wrong about that. So, if anyone knows more about this, let me know, because I'm literally just learning about this, and I'm, I'm walking on eggshells of ignorance right now. So, if I get anything wrong, just let me know, because I know I'm probably going to get something wrong here. But I'm assuming, if I were to be, if, I, if I got on a blockchain, my computer would, and my laptop would probably become nodes. And even if I shut them off, power them off, unplug them from the goddamn... Um, well, I'm pretty sure I'd still be consuming electricity, regardless. And if anyone wants to correct me on that, that'd be cool, because I would really like to know, because that's like having a ghost living in your machine. You know what I mean? Like, And if that's the case, if it's going to still keep taking electricity, do I have to plug my shit into the wall? Because at that point, it, this might as well be wireless. Like, if it's going to be consuming electricity if I turn this off, I expect this to wirely charge itself, too. And I know no one's going to make that technology, and that's kind of bullshit. What's the point of, like, me using up electricity for y'all, but you're not going to charge my shit so I don't have to use it, like, plug it into a fucking wall? See, that would be great technology. That'd be smart. Have, a, like, a, a self-charging laptop whenever you go online. It charges itself like a, like an alternator in a car. That would be fucking interesting. See, I, I think of smart things after a while. Why have we done that, actually? Why don't we make an alternator for fucking computers and shit so we don't have to plug them into walls? We just go online or use them and that recharges the shit. It has a thousand hours before you ever turn it on, as long as you keep using it every day. It charges itself. No need to even plug it into a wall. Why is it, why am why did I just now think about that? Has anyone else ever thought about that? 
if someone makes that, I at least want to get a thank you. I don't need the money. But just give me a thank you for giving you the idea. Don't, like, take the credit. But you best say that I was your muse to have that idea. Because that's a really good fucking idea. Especially with this shit. Like, if people are constantly have, having to use electricity, someone needs to make an alternator for a computer. So that way they can just keep running extra electricity and not have to worry about their bills going up. You know what I mean? That'd be smart. That'd be smart. Someone's gonna probably steal that idea and go with it. I'm cool with it. Take it. Just, uh, just tell everybody, hey, you got it from me. Just tell everybody you got it from some crazy little five foot three black woman who has no idea how NFTs work. Um, so let's continue. The environmental impact of all the computer equipment required to mint, which is how they mine shit and like make transactions and process the transactions on blockchains and equipped manufacture and equipment manufacturing and the eventual end of life disposal requirements consume natural resources too so you have the whole supply chain as well although the main focus currency is on currently is on the energy consumption of nfts nimuya said as with internet-based activities those sustainability issues are easy to forget due to their out of sight out of mind nature nfts consume energy throughout their life cycle from the time they're created or minted to their yeah, that's nice. I don't know you. Uh, to their subsequent sale and transactions of and their perpetual storage online. All of that is energy intensive. The most energy intensive blockchains are those that use a consensus mechanism known as proof of work, which we just looked at. This mechanism features a consensus algorithm that requires miners to solve complex problems. Thank you, phone. Using a trial and error approach with first with the first miner to complete the puzzle, then being authorized to add a new block to the chain. Proof of work requires fast, high power computers. Thus, proof of work consumes high amounts of energy. Proof of stake is also a consent mechanism, but unlike proof of work, proof of stake requires miners to stake capital, that is, cryptocurrency, into a smart contract, which asks collateral for the work they're doing to validate blocks on the network. Proof of stake requires less energy. Any blockchain in network that has a smart contract capabilities can toast to NFTs. The Ethereum network hosts the most NFTs, although Solana, Cardano, Flow, and Tezo are among other blockchain networks that also support NFTs. Some blockchain networks use proof of work, others use proof of stake. Proof of stake is a little more safe for them. Additionally, different blockchain networks have different energy profiles, with their consumption needs and energy sources varying, expert says. Moreover, their energy profiles have changed over time. All of this factors into the NFT environmental impact. Take Ethereum. It used proof of work up until mid-2022, a fact that prompted much of the concern over NFTs growing energy use. However, Ethereum shifted to proof of stake, known as Ethereum Merge, in September 2022. The Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance, which researches environmental impacts of different chain networks, blockchain networks, noticed the significance of the switch. The merger significantly changed Ethereum's uh, electrical use, decreasing it by a staggering 99.99%. Nimia wrote in an article discussing sustainability findings. Uh, using the Cambridge Blockchain Network Sustainability Index, NIMUEL, and other researchers estimated that Ethereum's uh, electricity consumption in 2021 totaled 16.4 ter terawatt per hour. Imagine running all of New York City's electricity all at once in one computer. For an hour. That's a lot. It consumed 17.58 terawatts per hour from January to September 14th, 2022. The day it shifted to proof of stake. But its use for the remainder of the year was 3.83 terawatts per hour. Ethereum's consumed 21.41 terawatts per hour in a total of 2022. A concrete figure that enables researchers to equate NFT's energy use with comparable activities such as driving... 15.7 miles in a Tesla cyber truck. Mm-hmm. You think a, 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 a cyber truck would last long enough to drive that many miles? Like, imagine 15.7 million miles in a cyber truck. That's how much electricity. That's actually way more than New York, I think. The, the, like, I, like, I don't even think... All the electricity in New York in an hour would touch that. That's a lot of energy. 
That's a lot of electricity. And we're just using it up like it's candy while there are countries like England who have, have had issues with electricity. Did you know back in the 80s, like, they couldn't power shit? At one point, they'd have to turn off all of their power to conserve their energy grids. And that's why they get excited for tea time, because tea time meant they get to turn the power back on and actually enjoy a hot cup of tea. They didn't have to sit with the power off. They're still, like, first world countries to this day that don't have nearly as much power and electricity as the United States of fucking America. Nor is wasting it. I'm just pointing some shit out here. I don't know if anybody's hearing what I'm actually saying, but that's okay. We still got a year. We still got a year. Researchers are continuing to work toward the fullest picture of the environmental impact. It's necessary to assess numerous factors to comprehensively understand a network's environmental footprint. Nimue wrote, and while electricity consumption is a significant element, it is only one of these factors. Subsequently, further research is crucial to enhance our understanding of Ethereum's environmental impact. Now, there is more to this. There's definitely more to this. Oh, well, that's it. That's actually it. Um, but the thing is, is, uh, when I started looking into this, because I thought that would be a good alternative than worrying about AI and AI artists and shit like that, because it's just like, that's an issue. Like, me as a traditional medium, traditional artist, I actually, it, it like, consumes, like, cotton paper, because I want to get back at the people who made my ancestors, like, have to pick that shit in the field. What now, motherfuckers? But, um, you know, like, I consume resources, I cause waste, you know, with transportation, shippings, uh, all in the sake of me having a hobby to enjoy, right? But it's like, it... I don't think it'd be good if I add more to that. You know, it's already bad enough I'm, 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 I'm utilizing factories to make my cotton paper, and I, and I, and I, and I'm, and I'm getting paints that I just recently found out were made in China. The ones are new and are made in China now. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I'm either thinking of uh, Mar Merc, Mar Murray, Mar Murray, Mar Mercy, or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. Or a Selenaire, or Selier. I'm thinking of getting one of them two paints instead. I like I like my Windsor Newtons, but it's like you make me feel a little sus. You know, not not a, a fun shade, fun shade, but still. But it's like I I utilize all of these different things, and I already make enough ways. Should I actually add in more ways just to make a buck? Just to make a buck. Because it, 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 I don't know if it's going to help anything anyway. Like, as far as I can tell, people have a lot more money than what they're exposing about themselves. Which I didn't realize. You know, I'm generally poor, poor. I be hearing people talk about being poor, poor. With BBLs and their nails done and their hair done. Or they're buying new things. Or they got Gucci belts and, like, new swag hats and all this shit or whatever. Which is, like, I don't know how a swag hat's new. But <laughs> I guess it was never been out of the box. Sure. Uh, how, when did people start putting hats in boxes, though? That's beside the point. Point is, is um, I see people with money all over the goddamn place, and here I am, a peasant, a laborer of sorts. Destined for the good life, not a rich life, not a bougie life, just a good life, a decent life. And here I am thinking about, like, ruining the environment any, even more. Just to make a buck. And then I had to learn this shit, and I took a step back and be like, I need to get away from my fucking ego. I need to get away from my ego and not utilize something like this, because this is going to be bad. This is why, uh, probably Zeus is dying. For anyone who didn't know, yeah. uh, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out the like you know like only certain people will keep getting the uh, static electricity, or at least some electricity in their body. Those are the ones you might survive. Everyone else, I don't know, but don't be utilizing this uh, like internet like this. It's bad. It's bad for us all. It's bad for everybody. Um, I think it's terrible just in general, but that's just me. 
I don't think I would actually use this, but, you know, it's whatever. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about. That's what I've been learning. Um, please be careful, also. Um, I don't know about the constituents of the denizens of the internet, I would say, I'll call them, but I, I, like, I feel like there's a lot of people who are in my line of, uh, looking at shit, and they're getting weirded out. I don't know. I feel like everyone's gonna start getting weirded out. And then all of a sudden, everyone's gonna see what the fuck I'm talking about. It is just like, oh, maybe we should've listened to the witch. Maybe you should've listened to the witch! But nobody ever listens to me. Like, they all act like they're scared of me or some shit. Like, I wanna do something, and it's just like, do I look like, like one of y'all... going out f fucking it up? Uh-uh. No, I'm, I, but I'm just putting it out there. It, there's definitely some weird... Ch I think people are going to start noticing soon. I'm not sure when they're going to start noticing, but someone eventually is going to be picking up that something's going to be off. And then they're going to... like, if they listen to me, they're going to realize it. But they're probably going to make it sit there and sound like they just uh, figured it out and they solved the mystery. It's just like, yeah, whatever. I don't really give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. But I wish you all the luck. Alright, I'll see you guys here shortly. I'll probably do another one tonight. But, I don't know. I might look into more shit. But, like, the whole, everything that... Like, I'm just saying, everything that's happening on the internet right now... Do you want this to be real? That's the question I have to ask. Do you want this to be real? Do you want this to be real? I don't know. Uh, I'll I'll leave it at this. When I was growing up, and I and I've told you guys a story before about how like I used to get sit in the middle of the living room with my mom and my siblings all sitting there, telling me what kind of person I'm going to be and like how I'm ruining my life and I'm this and I'm that and how much of a loser I am. And I do nothing but lie and all of this other crazy shit. Right? I grew up with them always constantly saying that shit to me, and none of it turned out to be true. None, none of it came true. None of it came true. None of it was true. It was a very interesting experience. And... What I learned from that... Because, like, you know, the way, like, the way that they would talk to me growing up... Absolutely had an effect on me. But it also gave me this kind of armor, too, because it was just like, you know, oh, well, these people said all this shit about me, and none of it came true. You're saying some shit about me. Why the fuck should I... Like, that's my family, and none of them were right about me, so why the fuck should I listen to you? You know, one of those things, right? So, when I'm sitting here, and after a while, I'm just hearing or seeing the same thing over and over, it starts to sound like projection to me. Because it's just like, you're not telling me anything about myself, a lot of times, I don't think I read enough about you guys to know anything about y'all. Like, a lot of times I say, you guys gotta let me know. But it's becoming a lot more informal, or a lot more formal. Uh, it's becoming a lot more, no, 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 it's becoming to the point where it's just, it's saying whatever to project whatever out. And it has nothing to do with actually the people who are viewing my shit. Which, I assume that's why I would be reading cards for the fortune of the people. Not for people they want to snoop on. Unless you're here for snooping, and then you're influencing my shit to do the wrong thing, and I don't want you here. I, like, I'm sorry. Like, I've been shadow banned for a long time anyway. People only come around, um, for good reasons. But this is one of those things where it's the same thing. It's just, like, I'm not about to, like, pour into something that's gonna cause way more havoc. And in that tease or a digital, physical manifestation of that same thing. And that's where I'm ending it there. But I'll talk to you guys later. On your face. Bye.